Roberts University in Massachusetts. Tell us, with reports suggesting an even more advanced ICBM from the DPRK, is this truly a new shift in tensions? It is a shift. And when you look at the past 25-year history, North Korea's trajectory of nuclear missile development programs, there have been on and off diplomacy, half-hearted sanctions, conventional military deterrence. Nothing has been effective in deterring North Korea from the nuclear path. This is a milestone for North Korea this year. 2017 is a great milestone for North Korea because North Korea is now on the verge of nuclear breakout with delivery capability. And that means the United States will have second thoughts in honoring its defense treaty obligations to South Korea. Were North Korea to provoke or to start a war in the Korean Peninsula? And that is North Korea's ultimate goal, to evict the U.S. troops out of the South, downgrade the alliance, instill doubt in the U.S. administration, and be better positioned to bully South Korea to extort aid and so on. Mr. Moon is trying to restart talks with the DPRK, but now there's a push for more firepower? Well, the firepower we're talking about is uh, really kind of ridiculous because it pales in comparison to the firepower that North Korea is showcasing. A kiloton or so North Korea's missile payload would be 20,000 times more powerful. So this is not real, uh, the real issue. It's not going to make a big difference. I think what can make a difference, although it will take time, is tougher enforcement of sanctions, both UN Security Council sanctions and US domestic sanctions. So far, the U.S. has not shown the political will to make that effort to go after North Korea's illegal activities and also penalize third country parties that enable North Korea and to lobby other countries to do that. Sanctions enforcement take time, take a lot of effort, just like domestic law enforcement. So far, we've not seen that happen. China and Russia is still saying they oppose the deployment of the THAAD in the ROK. How do you think this will affect the UN's response to the DPRK? Well, the UN will do the right thing, issue another toughly worded resolution. The problem is no country, including the US or even South Korea, has really faithfully enforced those sanctions. Again, it takes a lot of time takes a lot of effort. Sanctions are no, no magic wand that will change everything all of a sudden. So yes, there will be rhetorical condemnation, a tough UN sanctions resolution. But fundamentally, different nations have different national interests, Russia and China. Their interests in the Korean Peninsula are not perfectly in line with the interests of the United States. Kim Jong-un is really testing the will of the international community. In your eyes, how far do you think he's willing to take this? He has to take it further. That is, he has to raise the stakes by conducting further tests, further provocations. And then, at some point, he'll take a step back, creating the illusion that he is amenable to nuclear negotiations or disarmament talks. And that will change the dynamics, because the South Korean government today, we know, is very eager for reconciliation and talks, and that might create the atmospherics that might be conducive to the relaxation of sanctions, uh, return to negotiations, even for the Trump administration. The way to get there for Kim Jong-un is to continue to be a headache for the Trump administration instead of being a model citizen. Is the U.S. Uh, the first country that really needs to step up to the plate and, and being tougher? The U.S. is uniquely well positioned to enforce tough financial sanctions against North Korea's proliferation, smuggling, money laundering, human trafficking, and so on? Yes. So the answer is yes. The U.S. needs to do more and uh, shake itself loose from this illusion that perhaps China will solve the problem for the U.S. Sung-Yu Lee, thank you for joining us live from Boston.